let's let's get into something else here. Well, let's actually let's talk about uh, let's talk about our boy. Uh, Nico de Pimp. You're no, I'm ready. Ready. Is that 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 <laughs> by the way, spoiler, if you're a fan of By the Numbers, this is going to be some classic, like you're hooked into the main vein of the show right now. I don't go on. <laughs> We're just going to pivot hard. Another classic, another another favorite of the show. Yeah, Nico. Uh, well, apparently Pimp came through and uh, he took the bait. He's reading too many HLTV threads, according to Nico, because uh, Pimp thought that perhaps there was this whole narrative that Tabson would be joining G2 as the IGL instead of Alexi B, and that Tabson could be the one to keep uh, a hand on uh, Nico, to keep Nico under control, right, from uh, from freaking out. So uh, let me hear your thoughts on this one, man. What are you, what are you thinking of uh, this whole angle that uh, Tab... A, well, A, already... Just a taps and taps into G two. Like, where does that even come from? Yeah, the problem I have with that is because people will have seen already that like Tabs and, and the others have already from the big team been like baiting this on Twitter and trying to tweet. As, but the way they're tweeting, if you don't know, is the way people always tweet when it's a fake story. It's not happening. Like you do it like, oh, expect, you'd expect it like, whoa, big things happening next week. And then you have a guy go like, oh, I can't, good luck. Like the problem, is you just, <laughs> yeah, the problem is you just almost, let's think it the other way around, guys. Very rarely, very rarely someone did that and then it could not be true. Most times it's nonsense. Now, the problem I have with this story is I've never heard anything behind the scenes about these players, A, leaving big, but more importantly, at least for years now, more importantly, going to G2. Like I told you on the last episode, the stories I heard was like G2 gets like, maybe they get JKS, maybe they get Alex as their IGL. Obviously, he's not in Fnatic anymore. He's benched, isn't he? Like These are the angles I heard of. So personally, first of all, the story doesn't sound legit to me. If it turns out to be that I don't have the source on that one, I'll be very interested. But all I'll say is it's very rare that this case like this come up and I've never heard anything. So already, I do think it's nonsense. But here's the problem. I actually think Nico, I don't think he even did this like cunning-wise because he's not actually a super cunning person, by the way. He doesn't have a lot of guile. He's just brilliant at CS. I think, I don't think he actually, I, here's the funny thing, Samuel. Technically, his tweet is actually genius because it has the plausible deniability he could just be claiming you're reading too many threads in terms of that's not a move that's going to happen that could be the get out right but I don't think that's why he's saying that I think when he says you're reading too many HLTV threads he means because Pimp took the angle the classic angle of like someone will be able to battle Nico and tell Nico to shut up and unfortunately if you've noticed for Nico and his friends Yanko Kassad his whole fucking circle they cannot get over that fucking moment from E-League season 1 with his him and Chris J when he told Chris J shut up now here's the problem this is why they can't get over it but it's actually a microcosm of all of Nico's problems because here's the issue in technically if you look at the context of that scenario Nico was the in-game leader of mouse sports a lot of people don't know that at the time he was the in-game leader and the star player and Chris J in theory was talking about something from the last round and Nico's trying to call in freeze time the strap for the next round now if you say in that setting essentially I'm just saying like shut up as in like look I've got to talk now like, like, like forget about the last round like we're going to the next one mate yeah that's all fine but here's the problem like i'm totally fine accepting all of that but the issue here is this you're also implying when you get annoyed at that like because nico would never do anything like that that's the part i can't fuck with because here's the problem nico isn't even the guy who has to scream mate. have you ever seen nico play a game spoiler we've seen a million stage matches this is the guy where like when his team loses the pistol you think someone just pissed right into his fucking like iv like this guy ah. Oh. This is the guy where, like, you're in the 2v2 and you just go early, like, you peak, and then you just get shot, and he's like... Just like, like mate, you don't have to scream and shout. You're already essentially doing that, mate. You're the superstar player who can do no wrong because you're better than all the rest of us. But you're constantly disappointed with everything we do. We're never good enough. And then also, as people might know, I'll do some content on this soon, don't worry. Obviously, magically, this is the magic of all magic, Semler. Magically, all the players you don't like just seem to like find their way out of your orbit and then disappear. And then the players you do like find their way into your orbit. But at the end of it all, if you're Nico and his friends, you go... Nico never explicitly told them to fire or hire that person. Nico had nothing to do with it. So as I'll say, and I said in my last video when he joined G2, which by the way, go look, because that was when I just became completely unleashed with my YouTube videos. When I did that video, Samler, it's not just called like Nico joins G2. Like it even has all this shit in the title, like dedicated to big egos and egos is like capitalized. Oh, it's fucking hilarious. I don't, I don't give a fuck. So anyway, right. As I said in that video, here's the problem if you're Nico. 
There's two now alternatives if we think about the premise. Either what you're saying is correct. You never influence what people do. You never behind the scenes push for people to be hired and fired. You never suggest to your teammates you don't agree with what they do or don't think they've lived up to your standards. You never tell your boss this guy can't work in the team. You don't do any of that, in which case you're a fucking moron because this was your career, mate. You were in international teams. You are the player, you know, in FaZe Clan and G2 and all these mouse sports. Like, if you don't take some of that influence, like, you know, it's not dirty to, to have influence over the team as an individual star player you should want to have as much influence as you can to stay your career in the way you should want to do it I think you'd be a fool not to remove players you don't like and think can't win I think you'd be a fool not to tell your boss fire this guy he's a loser he can't win or he's fucking up the game or you can go the other way and you obviously have been doing all that you obviously fucking have been and spoiler and all your teammates for years then at the end of the day like just fucking own it like, here's the issue. Yeah, you're going to get flamed, right, for when, like, this team happens. Like, if people think, like, you didn't give the players a chance, yeah, they're going to flame you if you get the player you want. If, like, Adren joins the team and he's shit, people are going to flame you if they know you wanted him. That's true. But at the end of the day, like... All superstar players should actually have, want to have some influence over their team, in my opinion. Now, I don't think the team all should always just purely listen to you and do what you say. Obviously, there's a negotiation. But you should want to have influence. I think you'd be a fool not to. So, I, I think he's just lying, personally. I think he just doesn't tell the truth, essentially, about, like... Or he just doesn't fully understand, like, the influence he has over his teams. Like, as I say, he isn't a guy who'd have to shout at you, mate. You could just you could just see by his face that you've disappointed him, man. He's fucking... He's not even, like, the boomer dad who gives you the beating. He's just the one who's like... Whatever, just he's more like fucking certain US presidents. He's like, just go do drugs and be a fucking just burn out, you twat. Certain US presidents. It could be any in history. It could be talking about Jefferson there. Who knows? Did he have a drug adult son? I don't know. I didn't see Jefferson's son's laptop. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> this is what we used to have a timestamp feature. We don't anymore. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that you could be that unaware, though. Like, I don't think that Nico can be that. Exactly, he must know what's going on. Come on, you know. Exactly, like he knows that he. Needs, but the thing is, like, I think that there's going to be even more pressure on him now because he may, he may, in his mind, just thinking like, when does he peak? We talked a bit, a bit about this last sure. week. Is he already in his peak? Has his peak come and gone? Does he still have a peak in him? Like, does he still have a star level, world beating performance in him, or has he missed that window? Like, that's that's going to be. Um, if he keeps trying to force the situation on the roster rather than there being somebody like, was it you that made this point recently where MJ was just a terrible, uh, he, yes. he, just, he just had a terrible view on terms of like what his team needed. And so had he not been with the coach that he was with Phil Jackson, like had he not been with that coach, he would not have won all the titles because Phil actually had a vision. And then there was also that other guy who gets a lot of flack in the documentary. Larry um, Kraus, yeah, the general manager. Right. Exactly. Well, by the way, that's not a joke. If people don't know, like, for example, that literally the move, by the way, Samler, that made the original Bulls dynasty was that this guy, Jerry Krause, drafted two players. He did one through a sign, Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant. Now, Scotty Pippen became like a, a top 50 player of all time. And then Horace Grant was like a borderline all star when they won these championships. So, like, here's what you don't realize when he was getting these players in the draft, like Michael Jordan would be like, why are we signing these players? Get me this, like, guy. And he would be picking, this is why I give the example. He wouldn't pick, like, another all time great player. He would just pick a guy who was, like, flavor of the month. Like a guy who had like a good season last season, one off, and then he'd be like, "Sign that guy!" Like I'll give you an example. I'll tell you a name right now. A guy called Hot Rod Williamson. You've never even heard of him, right? He was like a briefly like all star level player for like a couple of seasons. That's what I mean. Like the, these players, the problem they have is, as you've seen with some of the players they sign, essentially, you know the way Nico did those moves. Let's let's not say he did it totally, but he was the main guy in the team and he was the in game leader. When they signed all those washed people to be the IGL and replace him, you know when they had they had a Dren come in from Gambit, they had Neo come in from Vertus pro and then you heard the other names you heard on the rest of the list they'd want it exist before that it's like dude like people are gonna look at you like you're funny in the head when you look because you, you you don't like you think Carrigan's not good enough but you think fucking neo in 2017 is good like give me a break you know what i mean like these like these two things don't make any sense together so like on that topic i want to know what your thoughts are on that because what do you think about that angle like like essentially nico is trying to play the game of like i didn't say anything it's like, i think dude shouldn't start players you should want to have some say right you don't just sit there and be left in the wilderness forever you don't, yeah, but I don't think you should have all of the say. I still think that it should be sure. like we've we've talked a lot about this in the past in terms of like um, having a sixth man. I mean, that was when existence was uh, was thinking about it. Starks again, remember? Like this is like kind of going back when Valve had to step in and say like we do not want a sixth man as an IGL who's going to be calling the shots. But like we were it, like I feel like it goes back to that kind of that kind of era as well, where it's just like it's it felt like you were starting to go. <laughs> You were starting to go in the direction of all of all of the power may not be in the server anymore, 
some of that power might be outside of the server, i.e. in the coach, in the IGL, if he was the sixth man or in the GM in, you know, because up until that point, it was always the players calling the shots. The French scene is as fucked up as it is because the, there's so much baggage oh, between sure. all the players because they yes. were cutting each other's, you know, hamstringing each other every chance they got when it came to roster changes. And so that's why you're just won't have another French team, I think, because with, at least with the core stars, the old veteran stars in it, because there's just so much baggage between them because they've just shanked each other so much. So like, I like I, I get where you're coming from where like you, a star player should have some say but I think ultimately that needs to be taken into account with like a broader vision of things and this kind of ties back into Kassad's point last time we were talking last week where he's, he's talking about how there needs to be a GM or somebody with a five year plan of like how you're going to build out a roster what's your next move if you lose one guy what are your options you know how are you how, like what is what is your game plan here and we don't have enough people like that we still don't have enough people like that actually in this scene in terms of um, the back end who actually actually have an understanding of how CS is played and what you need in each position. And that's, I think that's probably like, if you look at the NBA, isn't the majority of the, the coaches right now, uh, the top coaches, let's say, aren't they all majority players like Larry Bird and, um, he's not a coach, he's a general manager, but yeah, sure. You know what I mean though? Like in the back, in the, in, in oh, at the, the back side of the team, the players, guys yeah, making sure. the calls in terms of like actually building out teams or the vision of where the team needs to go and all of this sort of things. A lot of, you know, the, it's the ex players who, life is, yeah. who were wise enough to pay attention and start to understand like the bigger picture, like Kerrigan, for example, <laughs> example, when he decides to retire from being a player, odds are he could probably just go and like write his check wherever he oh, wants he and go to yeah. be a GM somewhere and just be like, right, you know, yeah, I clearly probably. know how to run teams. I know how to run international rosters. I can basically go anywhere and I will build yes. you a fucking star level team. Kerrigan is probably a guy who could do that. And so that's probably the future of like where we're going to go. Is that that it's would even be sick. Think right about now. it. That means in like five years, we could still have all these people in the scene, but it's like Kerrigan battling Blade, battling like yeah. whoever. Yeah. Yeah. You have all the greats. Yeah, and that, I mean, just think about that history, dude, how sick that'll be. And that'll be, like, yeah, really yeah. interesting. And it's like, it just keeps adding, it adds depth to it. Because right now, because we've just gone through that whole period of just, well, it's been, like, 20 years that the player is calling the shots. And so that could be that next step in terms of, like, we're going to move on from being children into maybe being teenagers. And then we're going to see, like, where we go past that when the orgs start getting serious capital to start throwing in. And then you can't have everything that Kassad is is hoping to have someday like you'll have your offensive coach you'll have your defensive coach you'll have your analyst over here watching the stats you'll you'll have your tape room you yeah, know yeah. like you'll, you'll be able to actually have all that stuff built out and that's when you know you've reached adulthood and we can actually see Semler's referencing Kassad's appearance on Snake and Bannock, which is on this YouTube channel. If you're watching the VOD now, it's on the Insight and Esports CSGO YouTube channel, which, by the way, also drop a subscribe if you like, buy the numbers. Snake and Bannock, at some point soon, it is coming. It's just being a little bit delayed. Counterpoints will return at one point in one day. By the way, obviously the issue here is we're having to do it manually, aren't we, human? We have to just get human Semler to look at the scene and figure out, like, oh, who should we remove? Like, what? who should we withdraw from this team? Or oh, what's the market for players? Well, here's the thing esports bet doesn't have that problem guys because they've released their new hybrid ai compliance system which opens up every single player to more matches around the world while also making withdrawals faster being able to better target the cheaters who ruin markets for everyone so basically this point is it, instead of the system flagging you if you bet on two small games or right before a big game goes live that's an upset now it's going to find out who the scammers are etc get them out the system flag them and then if you're legit you'll still be able to do your withdrawals obviously by the way they are not only running still the World Series and Series 2 competition but it's free to enter you can just click on the link go there they give you some DJT you can start making predictions massive prize pools to be won back to the episode that was just called a seamless segue yeah back to the episode and actually a seamless segue into like we're going to go into the same direction though because it will well, we're going to keep going along this line just a little bit because now what I want like the point that I want to make in terms of like how much say should a star have is um, let's say how like did did simple reach his peak form when he was able to learn how to actually integrate into a team instead of being the star uh, how does that work like if because you go back in the past several years in the past and simple you know the whole the whole narrative around simple was he's toxic he's hard to get a like he's hard to be a teammate oh, with sure. he's toxic he wants everything his way he'll 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 tell you sh your shit to your face like he's just the whole the most horrible teammate but then it feels like over the t over time he's joined Navi. It was definitely bumpy at the start. Blade himself said in past interviews that you know Simple would just call him a garbage can and shit like that. Like just literally just fucking disrespect him. But with time, it seems like Simple has come around and now has actually fully integrated the team and they are a unit. So he's still the star. I, you look at it; he is still the mega star of CS:GO, and he still shows it on the server. 
But that being said, it feels like he's finally found a system to be a part of where he's just another player at the same time. And it's Blade who's the one kind of calling the shots top down. I know what you mean now. Right. Over it. Yeah, here's the issue. I know exactly what you mean. Basically, you're actually like sort of backdoored into a point I do have about people like Nico and Simple, by the way, which is because I've seen this happen in other games as well, like in League of Legends, for example, if people don't know, there was a brilliant player called Forgiven who was a very similar, like simple S character. He was this amazingly mechanically talented AD carry. But the problem is because he's from Greece, he had a very fiery personality. And it meant that basically he would often be stuck on teams with like lesser teammates. And he would have to do a simple, he would have to like one v the game in order to win now what I've noticed with players like that similar is usually unfortunately it doesn't end up like simple they don't actually end up getting to the yeah. top team that they should get on and get all the championships they should and get the status that their individual player deserves and one of the reasons why is because I think unfortunately the fact that early on essentially they have like social deficit of social skills like they're not very good working with their team dynamics often those players i've found this i used to be like this myself as a person by the way when i was just a super nerd and i was an anti-social person who didn't talk to girls and stuff all i was about was like knowing the most about esports when you're a nerd like that the way your ego protects itself is you just tell yourself the thing I care about is the only thing that matters in the world. So I'm only going to judge everyone based on my metric. So in my case, it would be like, unless you know, unless you're the best in my field, then who gives a fuck about you? If you're simple, you can just go up with you. Unless you're as skilled as me, who gives a fuck what you think? You make it like an extreme measure like that. Well, first of all, that will actually ruin your perspective on the game. Because obviously, in Counter-Strike, as people like Simple had to find out, there's so much more to the game than just skill, mate. Like, yeah, you could headshot everyone that comes around the corner. But the difference is, I mean, I'll give a, a, a specific example here. Even though at the end of his career, everyone knows Edward was shit at the end of Simple's time Edward used to be one of the best support players in the game if people don't know he used to have mega numbers at the major a guy like that obviously didn't have the mechanics anymore but he had the fucking brain for it he had all that experience so the point is like, I do think unfortunately that it sort of makes players have a very extreme view on the game and then the issue is I think it makes them essentially that it's like being in prison assembly you know that premise where they say people who've been in like American prison when you come out of prison it actually takes you a while just to be able to do normal things like eat food without like guarding your plate and thinking it's people looking like steal off your tray or people looking at you weird in the same way as you get into that's what happens to people who are like the star in these shit teams they almost become like it has to be everything my way otherwise nothing nothing will ever work and they can't ever trust their teammates they're, all, they're waiting for their teammate to fail them because it's happened so many times so I do think in a fucked up way Actually, I know this sounds mad, but this is why those players forget, fail. It's because it, they're the one being the arsehole, right? They're the one being the toxic one. But they're actually the one, if you notice, that almost needs to be brought in like a fucking dog from the pound and shown that they can actually trust people and love and have a teammate and have a relationship. That's what I think Simple's journey the last few years was. It wasn't like getting better at CSGO. It was learning things like, how do you use a player who doesn't frag out? How do I like work with my teammates? How do, how do you do things? Like, for example, even sometimes maybe when I was filling the game, I'm sure he's had to realize that. Like, I might be better than you guys but maybe in this game my job was to carry and I didn't carry I, you guys did okay so I actually do think Nico to me is someone who's been affected by that especially because when you throw in this last detail I always say this this is why it's hilarious that I'm going to go down as one of the all time Nico haters I might be the only person who ever makes this point that I think a very fair point to make I always give him a special get out of jail free card that I also gave to Guardian which goes like this they don't have a choice to go to any domestic scene Nico can't go well I'm sick of people calling me toxic and saying I say shut up so I'm just going to go play with Serbs and Bosnians he'll never be a pro player so that means his whole career he has to essentially play away from home as it were you know all these fucking Americans like, oh, I have to live in Europe he has to spend his whole career playing in a second language you fuck like that's not nothing you're just fucking you're getting all advantages you don't even know you have so I do feel sorry for someone like Nico in that sense that he obviously is all automatically from day one culture clash working with different people you are ten times better than the people you play with on your first teams etc so unfortunately I think a lot of the experience like you know, it's I don't just make it like he was an arsehole. I'm sure all these experiences shaped him, and I've seen that happen to a lot to those super godlike players. Yeah, I agree. So I mean, it, it often becomes really hard for them to just be a normal player after that, as it were. They essentially have to just be the superhero all the time, you know? Especially when you're built up as the superhero on the team that you're in right now, like G2, where sure. there's just enormous pressure on you to, to perform because that's obviously what G2 were expecting when you join the roster. They, they, they've kind of gone step by step to make the roster what you want it to be. And so maybe there's also this other, it's not self-sabotage, but there's this angle of just like, holy shit, you know, it's like, 
maybe he is aware enough to the point where he's just like, they're doing all this shit for me right now and I am not delivering. And so there's that additional pressure going on in his own head where it's just like he needs to step up and actually bring the numbers and he's not able to do it. So each time it gets a little bit harder, it gets a little bit more uh, difficult to pull it off, especially when you come as close as he has now to winning a major. I mean, that was like the, uh, the that could be uh, a defining moment for him, that grand finals. Oh, good. Yeah. So it's a brutal, it's a brutal situation, but like, Again, um, that's just, you know, Nico reacting to pimp. I mean, it seems like, uh, there are more and more news that, uh, JKS, like I saw, I just saw another article that just got released, uh, just now, you know, talking about how JKS may be the one re replacing Jax, uh, on the team. I mean, personally, I think like JKS is showing like, a this is terrific news for JKS. Cause I'm, I, I thought that his visa would have run out by now. And that would have been a major play. I mean, cause if he gets chucked back to Australia, good night, you know, your career that's is pretty much over. Yeah, point. sure. Might as well pack it in. But if he's still here and he can get a visa extension and G2 could be a team that would facilitate that, if he actually hops onto that team, I feel like that could be a terrific opportunity to just revitalize JKS. I mean, he's shown on phase that he can definitely get in there and click head still and that he can do work. And if anybody's going to be grateful and work hard, it's probably going to be JKS because he's been out in the boonies for a long time now and he realizes just how close he's probably come to oblivion where, you know, it's either he gets on this team now because this is the whole reshuffle that he's been waiting for patiently all year long he's literally just been in europe waiting for the reshuffle for the mid-season reshuffle to happen and so it's like this is his golden opportunity that he's waited months for and uh it says and if he gets it that's that's actually going to be terrific because i think he's going to be a guy who's just going to go all out balls to the wall to make it work on that team so like what do you think about jks as a pickup do you think it's going to be a good move for g2 I think it's a good move all around because, first of all, a massive detail people are missing about this story is it's for Jax. It's not replacing Hunter. He's not replacing fucking Monacy. He's not replacing Nico. He's joining a team with those players. So the key thing for me is this. If you're all thinking, well, what happened in Complexity? He joined to be the star player and then he didn't do it. He doesn't have to be the star player. All he has to do for real is some of the things you saw when he was in phase replacing uh, fucking Rops or whatever. Like, just be like a, like a fucking good player. Be a consistent player. Contribute a little bit. Win the odd clutch. Things we know he can do from his whole career. If you watched him play a long, long time over his career. If people don't know, before Complexity, he was a pretty consistent player. This is a guy who always played his spots out. You knew he was going to be good. Listen, he was never a superstar. He was never like simple, but he was a star player. Like he could be a top 20 player in the world. So I don't think he's going to have to do that or be that in this team. But crucially for me, I do think he's a consistent player. I also think a mad underrated detail of joining this specific team is if you're going to join a team with an eco and with people like Carlos and have this enormous brand, the JKS is a guy who removes personality problems. This guy's just going to be quiet and just do his job. He's not going to come in and cause issues and strife and then there's not going to be any of that so the good news is he's just going to come in in my opinion just put on his hard hat and just go to work I think I think it's a great move for both parties I also do think yeah he should be super motivated to get back if people didn't see when I did my interview series with him which was at the end of last year I think when I knew he like was looking for a new team and all that jazz he basically says like he understands he fucked up in the complexity period and that he like under delivered and didn't play well enough and that he should have played better but the problem is I get the vibe in that team particularly because that team basically was so stupidly put together it had mad role overlaps all over the place like had all these passive players I think in that team essentially he implies this he just sort of was the one that was willing to sacrifice but that'll make you look individually shit obviously I don't think he's gonna have to sacrifice in this team dude like as Kassad said I think some of the roles he plays in the game even are just classical JKS roles so like I think this should work all around I think it's a good move it does look. Uh, it does actually look like it bodes pretty well. Now, obviously, the big uh, the big question is going to be who's actually going to be able to lead the uh, lead the team in the oh, IGO. Yeah, people like have to go and check out now. though. Did you see this? You know, G two do all those skits. Did you see the Twitter skit they did with Yankos and Jax as old men? No. Oh, everyone will have to watch it. Like after it's it's not very long. It's really good though because not only did they do the makeup pretty well, but like all the jokes are good. So it's like Yankos going like. It's the same old shit. And then it's Jack's just going, what? what? Fanatic is shit? What? Fanatic is shit? Oh, it's really good, mate. You'd like it, yeah. Like, they actually nailed this. They, they got the toy. Because, by the way, that's the sad thing about Jack's leaving. Jax is a really good personality. Like, yeah, yeah. By the way, he's one of the few people who is like that in real life. Like, that isn't just like some on camera weird thing. He is one of those guys, like, I will say, where he doesn't like speak as much with the English people. He's a bit more timid about his, his English compared to his French. But he is just a really cool, just funny guy. He's just an ultimate happy go lucky guy. Yeah. That, yeah, that's the thing that you hear it all over the place, right? He's got a sterling reputation. And I mean, it's, it, it, but it really is like, that's going to be the painful sort of scenario for him. At least 
he now has that claim that he has played on an international roster, so he may not be pigeonholed like other French players yeah. in the past. Like he could potentially pivot and try and get into another project here. That's another uh, up and coming individual project. I mean, the other idea is that you just go back and you try and make some kind of weird French super team now or French super team. Like it's almost, I almost want to say just like an Imperial or a Dignitas or something like that, where you get the boys back together again, like shocks and BK. I said this on Twitter. He, people are joined. This is how, you know, how offensive counter strike is. So, you know, the same people, like how dare you suggest that FNX and fall and shouldn't play anymore. So then I was like, why don't we make a team with existence shocks and Kenny S they're like, they're all washed. You idiot. Where have you put them on a team? Like, yeah, exactly. You, know, you all just can't be, tr you can't be fucking trusted. Can you? You know, that's, the that's the thing. Is, like they have a better chance of being good than that Imperial team does what are we talking about yes, here exactly. like mate if you put those players together your problem as a fan is you're thinking i'm saying they're going to be peak value they don't have to be kenny s just has to be a half decent opera shocks already still can win clutches nbk actually looked half decent at the end existence would have the tact you know what i mean like they we're not talking about be a world beat we're yes. not about be a double pony be a team that's just in the scene be in the mix and also yes. here's the difference imperial because they're not any good at all they don't even really to me have the nostalgia factor this would be a mad nostalgic team look how look at the the massive connections all these guys have they played for years together it would also like you say there are no true french teams these are the original french players this would be a great market in angle as well like you know the fucking i'd do the whole thing that the boys are back in town or whatever you know like, i'd do some shit like that this is where smith's smith's rolls up in his miata it's like <laughs> I heard no, what i'd do is that i'd even be cynical like that i'd be like the boys are back in town <laughs> And it'd be like all silhouettes. And then I'd suddenly have Smiths pop up and be like, not you. Just goes back down again. Then it's then it puts the real yeah. boys back there. Because obviously everyone's going to be scared of that. So I'm like, we're doing the last dance, like whack him with that. Because obviously if people don't get it. The last dance would have been a fine premise if it was like introducing FNX, Fallen, Cold Zero. But instead it was like FNX. You're like, does he even play the game? You're Fallen. I mean, you guess you're all right. Vinny, like, why isn't he the worst player on Fury? Like, it's the last dance. Remember all the majors I won? No, I don't remember any majors you won. I remember you being the fucking guy picking up fucking Henny's jockey moron. What are you talking about? So basically, like, if you do a real last dance, that's why I made my lineup fire as well. Like, make it a good one. Like, make it one with the actual banger players. Who the fuck wouldn't want Shock and Kenny S back in the server together? That would be straight fire. So that's that was that's like kind of the idea that I'm playing with. Or it's just like if you can find an org to back them, that's the problem, right? But they have big brands, so I don't know if they have necessarily like Kenny has a good brand on in terms of his stream. So he's kind of in that weird limbo where he would have oh. to probably ratchet back on the stream which is probably making him pretty good money right now so it's like do you want to take that risk to go back onto the server and actually try and compete is the is the fire still there um he's probably the one with the most of that although shocks also streams and stuff and like does content and stuff but like the others um you know it's kind of like <laughs> oh no what's going on one of the things i've never understood about shocks is without going too deep into it because it's a dodgy area isn't it it's like that whole sort of vibe he gives off it's like every now and then I think he's doing it accidentally. But then sometimes it's like he just does it so egregiously. Do you remember a few years ago where he did that stream? I think it was on his birthday or something, where he was just dressed like a sailor. Do you know what I'm talking Dancing. about? Like, like a really old school. Oh, he was just like a sailor. And then he began dancing like he was a stripper. Like, yeah. like it was just like a fucking Chippendales or something. No, yeah. he absolutely... It was, oh, man, if you haven't seen it, you, 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 you owe it to yourself to go and look this up on YouTube if you can find it. Because it's, you're all thinking I'm overselling it. It's exactly what I'm saying. It is. It's totally ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Shocks has got that vibe to him sometimes. So That's ridiculous. just the way it goes. He's got it. He's got it. I just, uh, you know, it's like, could see that French team coming together. It could, it would be cool. It's just a question of whether they can find an org to back them. You know, because like Double Pony were out in the wind trying to find an org forever, but then those guys don't really have a brand. Whereas you, you're talking about Shocks, Kenny, MBK. Because this is the point that I was making, that I've been making recently, is that you you go either one of two ways, right? You can go the old Cloud Nine way, where you lean into Shroud and nothing and Hiko, and just try and say, okay, we're you know we're like we're playing, but are we really going to win? Nah, maybe that's not the point. Maybe we're playing and we're going to sell. We're going to be able to sell sponsorships because we actually have massive brands brands with streams and then we can actually sell that to sponsors and that's terrific you can make money that way which is exactly how cloud nine played it back then and fine fair enough that's the way to do it if you want to go in that angle that's the last dance that's cloud nine x cloud nine that's that's you when you have players that actually have brands and streams you can go that angle but then be honest with us don't come into it saying like oh we're totally going to win tournaments but all of our guys are going to keep their streaming schedules and keep creating content you know because you can't have your foot in both worlds it has to be all in on the content side where you're just really leaning into the brand and selling sponsorships on that and you guys are competing but really you're streaming and you're creating content 
awesome or you're all in on winning tournaments like there is no fucking streaming it's all in just training in day in day out and you're doing everything you can to win you can't go halfway you can't meet it halfway so i feel like in like if you were going to get that kind of french team together you have to go hard on the content side you're not going to be winning tournaments or like you're not really the odds of you winning tournaments at that point given how competitive the scene is are pretty you know pretty slim but if you were to sell on your brand side of things, then I think you could actually get an org to come in and get involved and you could actually try and make something happen. So could be a, could be a thing that we get to look forward to down the line.